boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. And I am so excited to be here with you for another Nature Nugget. And I hope you've had a wonderful week. And I can't wait to share with you another one of God's amazing creatures. So let's review the clues for this week's Nature Nugget animal. All right, clue number one. They can smell food that is buried up to one foot of snow. And clue number two, their front teeth never stop growing. All right, let's think about this. What animal could it be? Hmm, that's right. This week's Nature Nugget Animal is all about squirrels. So let's jump in and talk about this fun creature, shall we? So our Bible verse for today is, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfoot their soul? Mark 8:36. All right, so I'm going to tell you some facts about squirrels and then I'm going to come back and tell you a story about a greedy squirrel. But let's talk about where squirrels live. So squirrels usually, the ground squirrels live in burrows on the ground and they tend to hibernate in the winter, which means they sleep for about 5 to 7 months during the year, during the year. And they awaken every few weeks and then go right back to sleep during that those five to seven months. Squirrels, however, have very few defenses. Their only real defense is to scurry away. Squirrels, do you know what they love to eat? That's right. Squirrels love to eat nuts and leaves, roots, seeds, plants, insects, and caterpillars. There are so many different kinds of squirrels. There are more than 200 species, but there are like three major types of squirrels. There's the tree squirrel, which is the one that you usually see in your backyard, the ground squirrel, and then my favorite, the flying squirrels. So let's start off by talking about tree squirrels. Now these tree squirrels, like I said, are the most recognizable. They are great climbers and they tend to build nests in trees. They come down to the ground for food. So remember, what do they like to eat? That's right, nuts, acorns and berries but you will often see them eating also some bark off of a tree or some eggs or a little tree sap. Now let's talk about the flying squirrels. Now flying squirrels live in nests or tree holes. They tend to glide by catching wind and flaps of skin. They can leap or glide more than 150 feet and these kind of squirrels they like to eat nuts fruits, and insects. So squirrels are mammals, which means they're warm-blooded, they're covered with fur, they have mammary glands, which they feed their babies um, with their, uh, their milk, and the moms have live births. They weigh about 4 pounds, and they're about 2.8 um, to 36 inches long, and that's including from the tip of their nose to their tail. They are usually the most active from dusk until dawn. Squirrels are considered rodents, which mean they're small and they're gnawing, so they're a lot like the beavers and the rats or uh, mice. Squirrels also have four front teeth that never quit growing. The growth is important because the gnawing helps when they eat on the um, nuts and stuff. It helps to wear down their teeth. A squirrel has many different uses for its tail. They use them to communicate, for instance. When a squirrel shakes its tail, it's to show that other squirrels that there is danger nearby. When a squirrel shivers, it's to show interest in another squirrel. It also uses it for balance. And finally, the squirrel uses its tail to help regulate their body temperature. The body will send blood to the tail to help cool the body down. The squirrel also flips its tail up over itself in light rain to help keep it dry. Squirrels are native to every place in the world except Australia and Antarctica. There are two types that were brought to Australia, the gray squirrels and the Indian palm squirrels. Gray squirrels went extinct and the Indian palm squirrels are causing problems and they have no natural predators. A squirrel family is called a dray or a scurry. Squirrels fight to protect their territory. Mothers defend their babies are very vicious. 
squirrels are able to produce, reproduce at 11 months old. Females attract males for up to 547 yards away. Um, the dominant male mates first, but other males may do so later. A female is called a sow, and she can have more than one litter per year. And usually there are two to eight kits, which are what they call baby squirrels, in a litter. They will fight to protect their babies, and they stay with them and teach them as they grow. Like we said, a baby squirrel is called a kit. It is born blind and deaf, and they are hairless except for their whiskers. A baby squirrel drinks its mother's milk for 7 to 10 weeks, and a baby squirrel will stay with its mother for 2 to 3 months. The eastern gray squirrel kits are about 1 inch long, and they usually weigh about 1 pound. Squirrels can find food that is buried um, up to 12 inches in snow. They are omnivores, so they, can, they eat both vegetation and small insects. Now I'm going to tell you a story about a greedy squirrel. Some people find squirrels funny and cute, and I guess they are, but they really do annoy me a lot. So let me tell you why. Not a day goes by without a few pesky squirrels visiting my garden and getting up to all kinds of mischief. They are greedy creatures and are always on the lookout for food, and they don't mind breaking things or destroying things to get what they want. Sometimes they appear to break things just for the fun of it. Last autumn, I planted a loads of snowdrops, daffodils, and tulips. I knew that we would welcome their jewel-like colors after a long gray winter. The squirrels, however, had a different idea. They thought it was party time, and they were determined to have a feast. In three days, they managed to dig up and chew all of the snowdrops. It seems that tulips are like cake to them because they dug those things up too. There was soil everywhere. Some half-chewed balls lay scattered on the lawn and on the patio and in the flower beds. It left me so furious and discouraged. The garden nurseries had sold out of the bulbs I wanted and I just had to buy the last few bulbs that nobody wanted. I planted them anyways. And my husband made some covers to protect the bulbs so that the squirrels couldn't dig them up. And then the winter came. It was so long and cold, and I put out the bird feeders to help them through it. The squirrels were there again, scaring the birds so they could steal their food. We have bought every kind of bird feeder that claims to be squirrel proof. So believe me, there aren't any. Nothing. No obstacle or trick one can think of will deter a squirrel from finding a way to those precious nuts and seeds. In a very icy week, none of us ventured out into the garden, but one of the squirrels did. One managed to knock down one of the plastic tube feeders and pulled off the lid. Greedily, he feasted and ate his way into the tube. His greed got the better of him because he ate so much that he got stuck in the cylinder and was unable to get out. And that was the end of it. We only noticed it when the weather had improved a bit. I hope that the other squirrels had noticed and learned a lesson, but I'm afraid they still chew off the tender little rosebuds of my bushes and dug out plants from their pots. But I learned the lesson they should have. Jesus told a crowd of people to watch that they are not overcome by greed. When greed overtakes us, we want more than we have, more than we need. And Jesus asked his listeners what the point was of trying to get more than we need, while forgetting that it was God who gives us everything we need. So every time I see a bird feeder, I am reminded of that little greedy squirrel and the good advice that Jesus gave us. It said that greed is one of the deadly sins. If the squirrel family who visits my garden could speak, they probably would agree. All right, boys and girls, that wraps up another Nature Nugget. And remember, like the beautiful book Steps to Christ talks about, we can learn more about Jesus when we look in nature. The green fields, the trees, even the passing clouds, all of it speaks to our heart and invites us to become acquainted with Jesus who made them all, including the squirrels.
All right, boys and girls, here are your clues for next week's nature nugget animal. Clue number one, they are known as man's best friend. And clue number two, they can only see two colors. All right, boys and girls, best of luck, and I hope you have a wonderful week. And I can't wait to join you again next week for another nature nugget. Bye.